Good evening. We will now call the business session of August 18, 2020 to order at 6.03 p.m. On March 16, 2020, the governor suspended various provisions of the Open Meetings Act pursuant to his state of disaster authority. The change was effective March 16, 2020 until further notice or until the state of disaster decla declaration expires. In accordance with physical distancing uh, guidelines and while providing as much transparency as possible, this meeting will not be open to the public. This meeting is being broadcast live at WCCC.TV. The audio is also being recorded. The video and audio recordings will be available to the public. According to the governor and attorney general, general statutes that may require face-to-face -face interaction between members of the public and public officials are suspended. Provided, however, that the governmental body offers alternative methods of communications with their, uh, their public officials. This includes public comment on agenda items. In an effort to allow for as much public input as possible, those who wish to submit their written comments on a listed agenda item were asked to submit their comments to the city secretary's office by 1 p.m. today. The city secretary will read into the record the comments submitted for the items on the agenda at the appropriate time. Individuals who registered to speak on a public hearing item will be allowed to speak via conference phone for three minutes. We received one registration for comments on a public hearing. When the registered speaker is acknowledged, he or she must limit his, his or her comments to three minutes. For any person addressing the council through the use of a translator, the speaking time will be doubled to accommodate the translation services. Now, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Um, our first item of business is to consider and approve the minutes of the August 4th, 2020 meeting. Are there any changes? Those will stand approved as written. Uh, we have nine public hearings tonight. The first is public hearing 2020-541. Uh, is this Clint? Uh, Galen. Galen, I'm sorry. <laughs> Honorable Mayor and Council Members, this is a public hearing to receive comments on an amendment to the 2019 Consolidated Annual Action Plan to provide funding for public service activities which are in support of the city's COVID-19 response. The proposed amendment will provide spending of federal funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development CDBG program as follows. Provide funding up to $21,000 to assist homeless individuals affected by COVID-19 with hotel accommodations to self-quarantine. The amendment was placed out for public comment from July 28, 2020 through August 3rd of 2020. Notice was placed in the non-legal section of the Waco Tribune Herald, posted on the city's website and on the city's bulletin board. No comments were received. All right, are there any questions for staff? We'll open a public hearing for comments. Uh, Esmeralda, did anyone register to speak on this item? No, sir, they did not. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Motion for approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please public counsel. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Kennard? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Eber? Yes, that motion carries public hearing 2020-542. This one is Clint. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution approving the following subdivision plats. A final plat of the construct and construction plans of the H&B Casparian edition and final plat and construction plans of Copper Springs edition phase seven. Uh, by a vote of 12-0, Plan Commission recommended that the subdivision plats and construction plans be approved. Thank you, Clint. Uh, any questions for staff? We'll open a public hearing. Uh, Esmeralda, did anyone register to speak on this one? No, sir. Okay. We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? A move for approval. I'll second it. That's fine. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. All right. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Anxious. Hi. <laughs> Ewing. Yes. Canard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Airfield. 
Yes. Fever. Yes, that motion carries public hearing 2020-543. Mayor, uh, public hearing 543 and 544 are both uh, special permits with the same findings. So I'd like to read those in the records first. Uh, the, rec the findings are that the proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan, uh, that the proposed use is compatible with the appropriate, appropriate and orderly development of the area which is located, uh, that the proposed use would not be more objectionable to neighboring properties because of traffic congestion, noise, fumes, vibrations, or any other characteristics than any use permitted in the zone, zoning district without the granted special exception, and that available community facilities and services, including the road system, providing access to the proposed use are adequate for the proposed use. Uh, so for a public hearing uh, 543, this is a uh, public hearing to consider a resolution granting a special permit uh, to Sadia Guaida for a short-term rental type 2 and R1B zoning district on property described as lot 13, block S of the Brookview High, uh, Hills edition known as 1320 Hillside Avenue. Uh, by a vote of 12-0, plan commission recommended approval of the request based on the findings that I just read in the record. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff? I'll open a public hearing for comments. Um, Esmeralda, did anyone register to speak on this item? Uh, yes, sir. Bobby Moore registered to speak, and he actually asked that we just read his comments into the record. It's in opposition of this item. He states, we feel that rezoning this location to short-term rental type 2 would cause our property value to decrease in value and crime to increase. Um, and then he asked me to read the objection. And that's all there is. Okay. Thank you. We will close the public hearing. Is there a motion on this item? Motion for approval. Second. Any discussion? Please follow the council. Rose? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Kennard? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Fever? Yes. That motion carries. Public hearing 2020-544. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution granting a special permit to Charles Hawley for self-storage warehouses in C2 zoning district on property described as lots 25, 26C, and A, block one of the J.I. Moore edition, uh, known as 1805 and a half and 1811 uh, Webster Avenue. Uh, by a vote of 12-0, uh, Plan Commission recommended approval of the request based on the findings required for granting a special permit per section 28-122 of the zoning ordinance. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff? We'll open a public hearing for comments. Esmeralda, do we have anybody registered for this one? No, sir, we do not. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Motion for approval. Second. Second. We have a motion in three seconds. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I want to I want to welcome Mr. Holly uh, to District Two, and, and glad that he's putting his business in Webster, on Webster Avenue. So thank you. Good. Uh, please follow the council. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Kennard? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Beaver? Yes. A motion carries. Public hearing 2020 545. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco be amended by revising Section 28 247 and Chapter 28 Zoning and Set Code, providing that the zoning map shall be changed so that certain property described as lots 1 and 2A, Block A, the Harvey edition, known as 200 and 202 Hillsborough Drive, shall be changed from M2 district classification to come and be designated to 03 district classification, providing for penalties, providing a severability clause, and finding and determining that the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of 12 0, Plan Commission. Uh, recommended approval of the request based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is keeping with the land use component of the comprehensive plan and the Imagine Waco plan for greater downtown. Two, the public infrastructure is adequate to provide for uses allowed in 03 zoning district. Three, the property meets all the area and width requirements for 03 zoning. And 403 zoning brings the existing commercial use in the conformance with the zoning ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for staff? I'll open a public hearing for comments. Uh, do we have anybody registered to speak from, on this one? We do not. Okay. Uh, we will close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please hold the counts. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Kennard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Deaver. 
Yes, that motion carries. We'll go to public hearing 2020-546. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing that the code of ordinances of the City of Waco be amended by revising section 28-247 and chapter 28 zoning and said code, providing that the zoning map shall be changed so that certain property described as lot four, block six of the Wentz Heights edition known as 2824 North 32nd Street shall be changed from C three district classification and become and be designated in the R2 district classification, providing for penalties, providing a severability clause and finding and determine that the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of 12-0, Plan Commission recommended approval of the zone change based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is keeping with the land use component of the comprehensive plan. Two, public infrastructure is adequate to provide for uses allowed in R2 zoning. Three, the property meets all area with and with requirements for R2 zoning. And four, the proposed R2 zoning provides for better compatible development opportunities in the existing C3 zoning. All right, any questions for staff? We'll open a public hearing for comments. Uh, Esmeralda, do we have anybody registered to speak on this item? We do not, sir. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll move for approval. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Please follow the council. Tom. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Kinnard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Beaver. Yes, that motion carries. We'll go to public hearing 2020 547. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco be amended by revising Section 28-247 and Chapter 28 Zoning and Said Code, providing that the zoning map shall be changed so that certain property described as Lot 8, Block 28 of the Spade Street Summit Edition, known as 2529 Spade Avenue, shall be changed from C2 District Classification and become and be designated in the R2 District Classification, providing for penalties, providing a severability clause, and finding the term the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of 12-0, Plan Commission recommended approval of the change based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is keeping with the land use component of the comprehensive plan. Two, the public infrastructure is adequate for proposed uses and allowed in R2 zoning. Uh, three, the property meets all the area and width requirements for R2 zoning. And four, the property the proposed R2 zoning provides for better compatible development uh, opportunities in the existing C2 zoning uh, district. All right, any questions for staff? I'll open a public hearing for comments. Esmeralda, did anyone register to speak on this one? No, sir. Okay, uh, close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Motion for approval on first reading. Second. Second. All right, we have a second. Uh, any discussion? I Ice just wanna, uh, sorry, oh, just wanna oh, congratulate sorry. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Uh, Chavez. I know they've been working hard on this. Uh, process and I've, I've had the pleasure of, of meeting with them and chatting with them throughout this uh, time and so I'm just grateful that they are uh, turn, they have requested to turn this back into a residential area as it is uh, perfect for the neighborhood so thank you for that. Thank you council member Sobito. Any other discussion? Please call the council. Aye. Aye. Yes. Kennard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Yes, a motion carries public hearing 2020-548. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance abandoning a 20-foot uh, 0.166 acre alley located between Mary Avenue and Jackson Avenue and between 6th Street and 8th Street, des uh, described as being all of that tract of land in the city of Waco, McLennan County, Texas, out of the uh, TJ Chambers grant survey, abstract number seven, being a portion of a 20-foot alley farm lot uh, 10 fractional block C as per plat recorded in uh, volume T page 552 of the deed records in McClendon County, Texas, and authorizing the city manager to execute quick claim deeds, uh, providing a severability clause and a finding determined the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of 12-0, Plan Commission recommended approval of abandonment uh, based on the following findings and conditions. Uh, findings are public use of the alley right away is not required for proper flow of traffic or for emergency vehicles access to the area. Uh, utility access for surrounding properties is not adversely impacted uh, by the uh, abandonment of the right-of-way and the abandonment of the alley provides uh, better development opportunity for the adjacent properties. Uh, the condition is that a 20-foot general utility easement must be retained for the area of the abandoned alley 
for all public utilities, including City of Waco, Encore, and Atmos utilities, must be relocated at the owner's expense. Okay. Uh, any questions for staff? Will public comment? Ms. Esmeralda, do we have anyone registered, registered to speak on this item? We do not. All right. We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll move for approval on the first reading. Thank you. Any discussion? Please call the council. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Kennard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Deaver. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Uh, public hearing 2020 549. <laughs> Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance amending Chapter 28 Zoning of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco, Texas, by amending Appendix B, Subdivisions, Part 5, uh, Required Improvements, Section 5.201, Permanent Improvements, to require that all uh, lots located in Waco's extraterritorial jurisdiction uh, and not immediately connected to a public sanitary sewer uh, facility shall be a minimum of one acre in size when using on-site uh, sewer facilities, repealing all ordinances of parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a severability clause, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for penalties, and finding and determine at the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a 12 0 vote, uh, the plan commission recommended uh, the proposed changes as uh, submitted by city staff. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Any questions for staff? Um, I have a question, Clint. We were asking about Pier Cities uh, and their statistics. Is that something we can get within the next week or so? Do we have time to review that and ask any questions before the second? Yes, sir. Of this? Yes, sir. We can have that ready okay. for you. And and Mayor, okay. if I may Great. add on to that, also just curious about is three fourths of an acre also sufficient? I'd ask that during the work session as well. Right. You think you can get a response to that as well, Clint? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? All right. Uh, we'll open a public hearing for comments. Um, I believe we have one registered speaker. Is that correct, Esmeralda? That's correct. Larry Jackson should be on the line now. Mr. Jackson? Yes, ma'am. You have a. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. I'd like to speak in strong objection to going from half acre to one acre lots. I do a lot of development and there's not any issues with a low pressure dosha system. That's not the problem. That's not going to contaminate any issues or water, whatever y'all are using, trying to use the very excuse to make this move. Does there anybody truly believe that the state of Texas, TNRCC and the TCEQ under regulates anything? I mean, we do a ton of developing and what you're going to penalize everybody that does it correctly for a handful of people that may have an issue. And I briefly spoke with on a few days ago. If you truly want, then we need to do something like what we do on every development project. And we create an HOA, which prevent people from building stuff that could actually put their, their drying field for their septic systems. So it is governed by somebody because the HOA actually has the authority to prevent somebody from building something to cover up the field that could cause a problem or with garages or barns or whatever else they're trying to put out there. But I'll tell you something else that I hadn't heard anybody talk about and I did the math. You go from a half acre to a one acre lot, people are gonna be trying to water those yards in the summertime and times like we got right now, because I've lived most of my life on septic systems as a kid and as an adult. I've got a low pressure dosage system right now. During the summertime with Bermuda grass, trying to water it just to keep it alive. If you do the math, you're going to use an additional 27,000 gallons of water every time you water the yard going from a half acre to an acre lot. To keep the grass alive in the summertime, you're going to have to do that twice a week. So that's 54,000 gallons of water used in one week. I believe that's going to be more harm to the water system than what a low pressure dosage system is going to do to anything, especially if you create an HOA where someone who's trying to develop a property correctly can actually monitor it to prevent people from doing stuff that could cause a problem. I mean, there's a lot better ways to do something if there actually is an issue. 
than trying to penalize everybody from trying to do what they want. Because I mean, it's state of Texas, TNRCC and TCEQ has forever agreed that there's not an issue with a half acre lot. And we put in a lot of development projects that are on low pressure dosha system and with the HOA where we can prevent stuff from happening. We have never had an issue in a development project with anything. So I just thank y'all for giving me an opportunity to speak against this. Thank you, Mr. Uh, do anybody else register to speak on this item? Uh, no, sir, we do not. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll move for approval on first reading. Second. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, this home's just right quick. I don't want to be an obstructionist in this thing on the first reading, but I, I just still have, I want to hear what the data is on the, the plats in the queue, the P, the Pierce City uh, practices, uh, the effective date and runway we're giving folks, and if the, the three quarter acre works. So I, I'm not going to support first reading, just heads up. That's all. I'm in the same camp as Councilmember Holmes. I would like to see more information uh, that we've asked for before. Um, I support it, so I'll, I'll be the same as well. Okay. Any further discussion? Please follow the council. Holmes. No. Ewing. Yes. Kennard. Yes. Cedito. No. Fairfield. You're muted, Andre. Yes. Fever. Yes. The motion carries. Um, we will move to resolutions. We have received comment cards on the following items, 2020-555, 572, 573, and 574, which we will re remove from the consent agenda and vote on separately. Uh, so let's start with resolution 2020-555. Uh, Esmeralda, will you read those uh, comments, please? Yes, sir. Uh, for resolution 555, uh, Mr. Jackson submitted his opposition, uh, but he didn't get to submit any comments on that item. So just for the record, it's from Mr. Jackson who's submitting, is speaking against this item. Okay. All right. Is there a motion on 2020-555? Uh, Move for approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion, motion and second. Any discussion? Please follow the council. Holmes. Aye. Ewing? Yes. Kennard? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Heber? Yes. A motion carries. We'll move to resolution 572. Esmeralda, do you have comments on that one? I do. I do. I do. So um, the following are submitted comments from folks uh, for both 572 and 573. One of them will be for 574. Each speaker gets three minutes to speak on as many agenda items as possible. So I will read their comments into the records, but just know that they're related to the, to the several different um, resolutions. Three different, okay. three different resolutions. Uh, the first one is from Mike Lee. Again, this is related to 572 and 573. And I guess I need to set the timer for myself. Um, this is, uh, the reason for this is the right-of-way expansion by TxDOT in connection with the City of Waco proposed MSW landfill. Southern Cross Ranch owners have received notice of the proposed uh, right-of-way expansion by TxDOT in the City of Waco. We would like to voice our concerns about the FM 939 road expansion project to facilitate the proposed landfill, which will cause undue harm to our businesses and specifically our deer breeding operation. We have repeatedly asked the City of Waco to work with us to protect our deer breeding operation and to delay the proposed right-of-way project until our breeding and fawn production cycle has been completed with no avail. Construction, Southern Cross Ranch owners are concerned about the proposed right-of-way expansion, the need to move our exterior fence, move a, larger portion, a large portion of fencing associated by our doe breeding facility, the loss of large trees that provide shade for the deer, and the disruption caused by heavy equipment and outside human interaction that will cause stress on the deer and or death that completely disrupt our business. Vehicle traffic. The traffic impact analysis, TIA, is inadequate since the data is formulated from 2016 traffic counts for FM 939, which shown 607 vehicles per day. 
The proposed landfill application states that the vehicle count per day will increase to 1057 vehicles and double over the lifespan of the facility. The analysis indicates 65% of the traffic will fall under the classification of heavy vehicles. The traffic data is not current and TxDOT or the City of Waco should be required to establish current traffic count for FM 939 to accurately predict the increased traffic hazard our business will face after the facility is completed. With the increased volume of traffic on all traveled ways, Entrances and exits of adequate design must be provided for abrupting properties, abutting properties, especially commercial properties that make ingress and egress as safe as possible to the traveling public and to those who patronize commercial establishments. The proposed auxiliary turn lanes consist of turn left, left turn and right turn movements, deceleration, acceleration, and their association transitions and storage requirements into the landfill. Left turn movements pose challenges at driveways and street intersections by increased conflicts, delays, and crashes. These problems are especially, especially acute at road intersections where heavy left turn movements take place, but also occur where left turn movements enter or leave driveways serving adjacent land development, such as a proposed landfill. The proposed center turn lane and design entrance into the landfill site fails to adequately protect the owner of Southern Cross Ranch and its guest hours of operation. We are very concerned with the proposed hours of operation outlined in the permit file by the City of Waco with TCEQ, Monday, Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., with the gates being open at 5.30 a.m. to eliminate traffic, uh, querying, and vehicles stacking up from FM 939 to enter the facility. TxDOT has not evaluated the length of the center turn lane, which is not adequate to accommodate the amount of incoming traffic sitting in a queue in FM 939 for up to 1.5 hours. That's three minutes, uh, but the uh, entire comments were submitted to all the council. Okay, thank you. Are there any other proposals? Um, Brian Ford for resolution 572, 573. I'm sorry. Reason right of way expansion by text in connection with the City of Waco's proposed landfill, Southern Cross Ranch owners have received notice of all the proposed right-of-way expansion by the City of Waco. We would like to voice a concern about FM 939 Road Expansion Project to facilitate the proposed landfill, which will cause undue harm to our business and specifically our deer breeding operation. Um, we have repeatedly asked the City of Waco to work with us to protect our deer breeding operation to delay the proposed art right-of-way project until our breeding and fawn production cycle has been completed. These are for agenda items 2572 and 202573. These agenda items should be tabled for the following reasons. Southern Cross Ranch owners have submitted comments to TxDOT and the City of Waco and request information under the Public Information Act as of July 28th of 2020. The City has denied our request for the records and has forwarded our request to the Attorney General Office for clarification on the information we have received. As such, this, the end, this agenda item should be tabled until the Attorney General has responded to our public our request for public information. Two, Southern Cross Ranch owners have been in negotiations with the City of Waco for the past several months and recently had a Zoom meeting with the City Manager and City Attorneys on July 28th of 2020. The meeting was to discuss purchasing the entire tract of land from the owners of Southern Cross Ranch, which is approximately 132.4 acres. As of today, these negotiations are still ongoing and the need to vote on Resolution 2020-573 would be a moot point at this point at this time. Construction. Southern Cross Ranch owners are concerned about the proposed right-of-way expansion, the need to move our exterior fence, move a large portion of fencing associated with our doe breeding facility, the loss of large trees that provide shade for the deer and the disruption caused by heavy equipment and outside human interaction that will cause stress on the deer and or death and completely disrupt our business. Vehicle traffic. The traffic impact analysis, TIA, is inadequate since the data is formulated from 2016 traffic counts from FM 939 and shows 607 vehicles per day. The proposed landfill application states the vehicle count per day will increase to 1057 vehicles and double over the lifespan of the facility. The analysis indicates 65% of the traffic will fall under the classification of heavy vehicles. The traffic data is not current and TxDOT or the City of Waco should be required to establish current traffic counts for FM 939 to accurately predict the increased traffic hazards our businesses will face after the facility is completed. With the increased volume of traffic on traveled ways, entrances and exits of adequate design must be provided for abrupting, abutting properties, especially commercial properties, that make the ingress and egress as safe as possible to the traveling public and to those who patronize 
commercial establishments. The proposed auxiliary turn lanes consist of left turn and right turn movements, declaration, acceleration, de deceleration, acceleration, and those associated transition and storage requirements into the landfill. Left turn movements pose challenges at driveways and street intersections by increased conflicts, delays, and crashes. Uh, the next um, comment is from Fred Swanner, and this is for Resolution 572. Why don't you use the funds more wisely and purchase land from Joe Dunlap on the north side with these funds build your own private entrance off Highway 31 versus turning FM 939 into a death road? The road is the only major straight line passage to Mart, Riesel, Marlin without going all the way back to Loop 340 in Waco. Every school, every little league basketball, softball team, plus every farmer rancher use the road every day. To destroy this road, regardless of your best intentions or to use of public funds, will never work. Also, all heavy equipment and oversized cargo use the road as well. Joe would sell you the land and then come straight off of Highway 31 with your private entrance and leave the public road to the public. Net cost to the city would be most likely a net zero. Only this way it would be safe, literally, not just on paper. He continues, don't know how to, you plan to widen FM 939. Your resolution, resolution 2025-72, 140 feet past Happy Swanner Lane. When I own the road frontage north of Happy Swanner, plus the road itself, check McCad, the, the county only has a prescription easement for the land, not ownership, plus the road frontage south of Happy Swanner Lane. That's everything from Mr. Fred Swanner. Next comment is from J.R. Proctor for 2020 572 and 573. Mr. Proctor says, I'm strongly against the expansion of FM 939 and the subsequent enactment of immediate imminent domain to facilitate this end. As a road that is frequently used by Axel ISD school buses to transport students to and from school, I believe this expansion and entry point will be put to child, put children's lives in danger. Put children's lives in harm's way. The last comment is from Gina Ford. She's submitting comments for resolution 2020, 572, 573, and 574. Right-of-way expansion for DexDOT in connection with the City of Waco's proposed MSW landfill. Agenda item 2020, 572, 573, and 574. My name is Gina Ford, and I'm one of the owners of Southern Cross Whitetail Ranch. We have voiced our concerns about the new municipal solid waste landfill that will be directly across the street from our business and the devastating disruption to our business it will have along the dangerous traffic conditions our business and customers will be exposed to when the landfill is open. The landfill will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., six days a week, and allow heavy equipment in operation from 5.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, which will ruin our deer breeding and hunting operation because the excessive traffic and noise will stress the deer. And if you've ever seen a scared deer run straight into a fence, break their neck, and die, it is not an experience I recommend. The right-of-way expansion will include a center turn lane that runs the entire length of our property and extends 140 feet past Happy Swanner Road, which is south of our property. The center turn lane will allow heavy vehicles and 18-wheelers to sit in a queer or holding pattern in the center turn lane of FM 939 starting at 5.30 a.m. waiting on the landfill to open. This will cause a dangerous traffic situation for the owners and guests of Southern Cross Ranch and the community to deal with on a daily basis. I also question timing of our dealings with the City of Waco. You all have had approximately two years to contact us once the city bought the site acreage and just now, in the last few months, there appears to be a rush to either buy us or get us out of the way, smack dab in the middle of our breeding season and the upcoming hunting season. If the city had open to was open to communication with us in 2018, we might not be here where we are today. I am requesting the council members table agenda items 2020, 572, 573, and 574 until the public information request has been ruled on by the Texas Attorney General's office, which will allow us to the time to continue negotiations with the City of Waco to purchase the entire ranch. If the council members agree to table the agenda items, I would like to be notified when the tabled agenda items are added back to the next City Council meet to give us an opportunity to respond. 
It is our hope to continue negotiating with the city in a positive and productive manner. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Gina Ford. Mayor and okay. Council, those are all the comments that we received. Thank you, Esmeralda. Um, we will take each of those uh, resolutions separately. Is there a motion on resolution 2020-572? Yeah, I'll move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Just one quick question, Mayor. Um, uh, 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 and this is thanks to Esmeralda. The, the, just in fairness to the, the speakers, are the, uh, did you already forward those, that full, uh, the full uh, text of what they're, they're, uh, what they had to say to, to the council? Yes, sir. Okay, I just want to make sure. I thought, I thought you had. That's the only question I had. I just want to make sure we had access to that. Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Please call the council. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Kennard? Yes. Levito? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Weaver? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, we'll now go to resolution 2020 573. Is there a motion on that resolution? And just as a reminder to council, there, I provided y'all special motion language for that item. Yeah, I've, right. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Um, Thank you. I move that the city of Waco authorize the acquisition, including the use of the power of eminent domain, if such becomes necessary, to acquire free, fee simple title to a 17,534 square foot, 0.403 acre parcel of land out of the Ant Antonio Rodriguez Valdez survey, abstract number 880 in McLennan County, Texas, and being a portion of the remainder of a called 70.95 acre track described in a deed to Mike Rex Lee, AKA Michael Lee, and Brian Paul Ford recorded in McLennan County Clerk's document 2004037717 of the official public records of McLennan County, Texas for road improvements in connection with the Farm to Market 939 Safety Improvements Project. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Thank you. Any discussion? Please call the council. Holmes? Aye. Lee? Yes. Mar? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Warfield? Yes. Weaver? Yes. That motion carries. Uh, we'll go to resolution 2020 574. Is there a motion on that resolution? Motion for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please call the council. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Weaver? Yes, uh, that motion carries. The consent agenda tonight consists of resolutions 2020-550 through 2020-574 with the exceptions of resolutions 2020-555, 572, 573, and 574. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Please call the count. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Mark. Yes. Vida. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Eva. Yes, that motion carries. We have two ordinances tonight. The first is Ordinance 2020 575. In ordinance establishing administrative departments of the city of Waco, Texas, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a savings clause, providing for an effective date. And finally, determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed, open to the public as required by law. This ordinance comes to council on the first reading. Okay, I believe we have comments on this uh, item. We do, yes, sir. Uh, Alan Northcutt submitted the following comments. The Sustainable Resource Practice Advisory Board sent recommendations to the City Council in the spring of 2019 calling for cutting city greenhouse gas, GHG emissions, through the adoption of renewable energy and other changes. However, the SRPAB has not met in over one year. Other boards have met, and there is no administrative departmental focused on this goal. Without a department dedicated to making these changes, the status quo is largely maintained. Therefore, we call for the formation of a sustainability administrative department, which would focus on making recommendations and plans for decarbonization. Since the best practice of the IPCC states we must reach a net zero emissions by 2050, Clearly, a department is needed for this vital task. 
Already, the city is experiencing rising temperatures, worsening drought years of crop loss, increased flooding downpours, all at just one degree C temperature increase. The science projects marked worsening of these impacts over the coming years. To meet these challenges, a sustainability department would provide needed directions such as new building codes requiring rooftop, rooftop solar on businesses, serious transition of the Waco fleet to electric vehicles now, and incentives for citizen rooftop solar and EV adoption. Scientists are saying that the COVID-19 is the pop quiz and the climate crisis is the final exam, for which there is no vaccine or quick fix. Clearly, the city's greatest challenge requires a sustainability department dedicated to developing solutions. Please take time to consider adding this department. Without sustainability, the other departments become moot. Thank you. Thank you, Esmeralda. Are there any other comments? No, sir. Okay. Is there a motion on this item? Move for approval. First reading. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Kennard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Fever. Yes. That motion carries ordinance 2020-576. In order to approving and adopting the final service plan for the Waco Tourism Public Improvement District, TPID, for fiscal year 2020-21, levying special assessments on properties in the TPID to pay the cost of services provided in accordance with the final service plan setting charges and liens against property in the TPID and against the owners thereof, providing for the collection of special assessments, providing for a savings clause, providing for an effective date, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on August 4th, 2020. Thank you. I'll move approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please public council. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Kennard. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Heber. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Are there any council member reports on committees or boards or commissions liaison visits? Mayor Deaver, uh, I don't have a, a committee board or commission report, but I do want to acknowledge um, a nonprofit that does great work in our community, which is VASA Voices Against Substance Abuse. Um, they are targeting and really doing head on work with uh, drug abuse among adolescents and how to prevent it from an early age. And they are uh, just very effective in the work that they do. Well, on, on August 31st is International Overdose Awareness Day. Um, and we are gonna be giving them a proclamation to honor that day here in Waco, Texas. And so I just wanna say to Vasa, congratulations and, and keep up the great work. And we join them in the fight against substance abuse among youth. That's great. Thank you, Council Member Sabido. Anything else from anyone? All right, uh, there being no further business, we will adjourn the meeting at 6.46 p.m. Thank you all.